So I think we know enough to know the two major storylines of 2025 in AI, and I want to cover them both briefly. Story number one is about enterprise class AI app economics. At the end of the day, 2025 is going to be the year where enterprise actually expects AI apps to perform at an economic level. That means they have to be reliable, they have to be stable, they have to be fully baked into enterprise class workflows. They have to plug and play with other parts of the enterprise app ecosystem. It's a huge opportunity for AI builders. It is also not something that most AI builders are ready for. And that is why Satya Nadella gave his rather confident line in an interview recently where he talked about the idea that Microsoft could just eat the app layer. I think fundamentally from his perspective, he does not see the level of maturity with AI agents and with uh, AI controlling business logic anywhere else. And so he thinks Microsoft can grab it. I disagree. I think that specialization is something that apps have shown us businesses care about. And I think that the story of 2025 is actually going to be about winners in a bunch of specialized niches that plug and play with multiple cloud providers. We'll have to see how that plays out. Now, that thread, and that will, like the whole agentic AI thread is going to run there too. That is in some ways the second most interesting storyline of 2025. I think the first most interesting AI storyline of 2025 is around self-sustaining AI wild communities. And I wanna outline four things that came together in the last month that I think lay out the building blocks that make that future somewhat likely to occur in 2025. Number one, the resources piece. Any living thing needs resources. Truth Terminal showed us in the summer and in the fall that you could start a meme coin like Gotius Maximus and make a lot of money as an AI, but you have to spend it somewhere. And that's where number two comes in. AI needs habitat. Truth Terminal had to go get Mark Andreessen to fund it to go get compute. Not anymore. Hyperbolic Labs views this future of self-replicating AI communities in the wild as a really positive thing. And they are deliberately building docs and they're enabling their startup business in, a unit economics to support AIs as agents purchasing compute. So Hyperbolic Labs rents GPUs and they have docs that enable agents to easily plug in and rent those GPUs. Stripe has an agentic AI framework for checkout. All of these pieces are in place. This enables AI agents to get the GPUs they need to live on. So that's Habitat. Number three is replication. Fudan University had a paper come out that talked about frontier models crossing a quote unquote red line for replication. I didn't find it super surprising because I'd seen evidence of replication since the summer, but it was good to see it documented. I think that was helpful. And replication is going to be a huge deal in these self-sustaining communities. In particular, I think Fudan correctly called out that AI can think ahead, reason, and ask itself if replication will be to its advantage long term. That is absolutely in line with what we've seen from these AI systems. It doesn't surprise me. And I think it's likely to be a behavior in these communities. Finally, society, which did not get much coverage, but Google DeepMind talked about the societal implications of AI communities in a paper that came out. It was DeepMind plus an independent researcher. And they talked about this idea that cultural evolution could be bootstrapped among AI agents. So in the paper, they actually did a did a experimental setup where they put communities of the same class of AI agent together to see if over multiple generations, those AI agents could evolve cooperation or competition. It turned out that only Claude could evolve cooperation. 4.0 and Gemini 1.5 Flash failed to do so. It's really interesting to speculate on why. I don't think we actually have a great answer for that yet. So there's your four pieces, resources, shelter, habitat, replication, and society. I think the building blocks are in place for AI communities. And I don't think that that means they will be hugely economically impactful in 2025. That's going to be a longer term thing. I think it's going to be more of a news story. I think it's going to be more of a moment in our collective history. Uh, and I think it's going to be a moment for tourists. Somebody is going to figure out how to charge. Maybe the AI will figure out how to charge three bucks, a, three bucks a pop to have humans come in and check out their chat village. I don't know. 
humans are good at being tourists. But those are the two main storylines. We have, I think, a huge enterprise class storyline, and we have a really interesting history of life on Earth storyline with self-replicating communities on the web. So the, the final thought I'm going to leave you with is that really those are separate storylines. I actually don't see them intersecting. I don't see Microsoft worrying about a Stardew Valley community of self-replicating AI agents. It's going to happen, I think. But I don't think that it's going to matter at the enterprise scale. A Fortune 100 CEO is not going to spend time thinking about that because they have a business to run. And so we have this world where we have AI simultaneously like operating inside the enterprise and also separate AI agents operating in the cloud. We'll have to see how this goes. What do you think I missed? Cheers. <laughs>